guys, these are the five stocks that I'm going to be buying this quarter as long as they hit my price target. So let's get into the stocks and find out what the price targets are. Stock number one, Nike, number one sports apparel business in the world. I had somebody recently on Twitter tell me they don't think there's much of a moat to Nike. I respectfully disagree. I think Nike is an incredible company. If you look at their stats here, the thing I love about them, forget about the fact that they have LeBron, they have Jordan, they have all these greats. The thing I love is the lessons we can learn from a company like Nike. Look at this, all time high. 179.10 back in November 5th, 2021. That's two and a half years ago. And now the stock is at $89.86. That is a drop of 50%. Guys, a company like Nike dropping 50%. We've made tons of video where people say, Paul, no way company X drops 50%. And we saw it happen several times. Nike. Google, these are the two biggest ones. Amazon fell 50%. You look at these things and think, and just as a reminder, the stock market's fickle. Emotions are fickle. Mr. Market's going to go up and down every single day, every week, every month, and it's not going to be based on fundamentals. Why? Because look, Nike here being down 50% since 2021, let's look at the income statement. In the last, in the last full annual year, they did $51.22 billion. In the year before then, where they had their all-time high, $44.5 billion. That is an increase of 15%. But yet the stock is down 50%. Let's go look at the profit. I don't know what the profit's at right now. So the profit went from 5.73 down to 5.07. But again, is that a 50% drop? No. This is what I mean about when I tell people that the efficient market theory doesn't work. In the short run, stocks are a voting machine. In the long run, they're a weighing machine. So these things don't really add up from that perspective. And you look at operating income, again, it's down about 15%, 6.94 billion down to 5.92. And I'm sure there's a lot of reasons for that. But I look at it and I want you to remember that when you're buying a company, you wanna buy a company, in my belief, that has a lot of upside potential years and years down the road. Do you think Nike will be around for a long time? I surely do. So it's about finding the right price for Nike. But just remember, when you get impatient, like we all do, we wanna buy a company, things do go up and down. Nike down 50% over the last two and a half years. That's not great, but it is great for those who want to buy more shares. So let's see what Nike's worth to me today. We'll go to our stock analyzer tool. And we're going to pull up the last time we did Nike, which was rather recently. Now, guys, I did a 10-year analysis here, as I usually do. I can go up to 20 years. But I did 3 5 and 7% revenue growth as my low, middle, and high assumptions. And guys, you know, look at the last 10 years, 6% a year, last five years of 5.7. So I think that's pretty reasonable. Now for profit margin, very consistent profit margin in the past. I actually went higher though. I did 10% on the low side, 11.25 in the middle, 12.5% on the high side. Probably a little more aggressive than I should have, but the reason I did that is they're selling more and more direct to consumer, which is higher margin. So I'm hoping that really drives up this margin. Free cash flow, I kept the exact same thing, even though their free cash flow was lower than their profit margin. Now for PE and price to free cash flow. Guys, this is part of the art of investing. What is the reasonable earnings multiple? What's the reasonable amount you want to pay of earnings? This is what makes investing hard. I put 20, 23, and 26 for both of these. If somebody came out tomorrow and said to me, Paul, you're wrong, it's 25, I'd agree with them. I don't know. This is, this is what makes it hard. Look at Coca-Cola and Warren Buffett buying in 1987. His first purchase of Coca-Cola, the PE was 30. Now, I'm not saying that Nike is like Coca-Cola. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is he went and paid a 30 times multiple and has made 11.5% on his money since then. All right. Now, here, guys, I put the desired return, annual return of 9%, because this is no margin of safety. I'm trying to look at what do I think the intrinsic value for, uh, for Nike is. If I were to get the exact same market return, what would I be willing to pay to get Nike? That's why I put 9%. I hit the analyze button, boom. All right, guys. So the stock's currently at 89.91. I have a low price of 60, high price of 125, and a middle price of 89. Again, no margin of safety. I have my watch list at 85, not to buy it at 85, but to start selling puts, and here's why. I want to buy it, let's say, starting at $80 a share. So let me show you how I would do that. 
Guys, this is Thinkorswim, a platform I use to look at my options. Now, the idea behind selling puts is very simple. I'm getting paid to wait for a stock to hit the price I want it to hit, where I want to buy it. Now, to be honest with you, $80 on a company like Nike is too far away. But let's say you like Nike at $86, okay? You sat there and say, you know what? I like the company now, but I think $86 is my buy price. I'm being hypothetical here. I'm not attaching anything to it. So what do we do? We pick a date in the future. So let's say we pick 32 days from now, May 10th of 2024. I clicked here on May 10th at 32 days, and I pick $86 a share. Now, look at this. The bid price is a conservative one. It's 8.87. That's about 1% for 32 days. That means if I did this every single month and I never got the shares, I would get a 12% return on my cash waiting for the stock to sell. So you might sit there and say, this sounds awesome. What's the catch? Well, there is a catch. The catch is if the stock goes to 75, you're still paying $86 for it. You keep the 86 cents. So it's like you pay $85 and 14 cents, but you still paying, you're getting taking an immediate loss. Now you might sit there and say, well, why would I want to do that? Well, guys, this is for somebody who sits there and says, the second it hits 86, I'm buying it. The second it hits 86. So remember, you're selling puts. It's a great way to make extra return on your cash, but you got to be okay owning the stock at the price you selected on the date you selected. Look at Nike. Two and a half years ago, would people have thought Nike would be down 50%? No. And those things can happen fast. We see big companies falling 20, 30% in a matter of a couple months. That's where you have to sit there and have the stomach and the emotional ability to be able to say, I'm okay. I would have bought it at 86 anyhow. I'm cool on this one. So that's very important here. Now, company number two, Starbucks. Now, I love Starbucks for a certain reason. Not because I go to Starbucks, because I don't. But Starbucks, to me, is another company. It is selling near a 52-week low. 52-week low is actually today, $86.65. It just hit it again, $86.64. That's incredible. All-time high of $126.32, again, almost three years ago. This company's gone sideways for a while. Now, it pays a 2.5% dividend, so you've gotten some return along the way in terms of a dividend, has a great return on capital. This means they get a great return on the money invested in the business, all right? Now, some other high-level things I wanna talk about with Starbucks. Let's look at the income statement. Look at this growth. 19 billion to 21.3, 22.3, 24.7, 26.5, a fall, but guess what? It was during COVID, 23.5, rebounded to 29, 32, $36 billion in revenue. That is huge. Now, guys, I went to their, 10, their 10K. How did I get to their 10K? I went here to our metrics page, scrolled down to the bottom, clicked on our annual report. It takes me right to their 10K. And here's something very interesting I want to show you. It's called their comparable store sales. The 10K shows you the intricate details of the business, how they're explaining the business. And look at this, guys. When it comes to any sort of retail establishment, I always like to look at comparable store sales. What is that? It's very simple. Stores that have been open for X amount of time, usually 12 or 18 months, that way it's not a new store adding more revenue. A more established store. That's a good way to see, is the business healthy? Are they growing their same store, the stores that already existed? If they stopped opening more, would they still be able to grow? That's what I like seeing. For both North American segment and US market, comparable store sales increased 9% for fiscal 2023 compared to an increase in 2022 of 12%. That is huge. And the average ticket for both of these segments grew 6%. Now, why is that? Primarily driven by pricing in our U.S. market, inflation. That definitely helped that. But same store sales growing 9% is a phenomenal number. This is the number of stores internet globally by Starbucks. Back in 2003, it was around, what is that, 7,000? And it just keeps growing. And look at this. This flat line right here was the financial crisis. My guess is they're like, eh. Let's pump the brakes here. Now, let's go look at their 10K again to see how many stores they're opening and closing in the last year. Again, in their 10K, you can find this kind of data. Look at this right here. This breaks it down. North America, total North America, international, all other. Stores open as of October 2nd, 2022. In North America, 10,216. Internationally, 8,037 for a total of 18,253. 
How many they open? Well, in North America, they opened 527. Internationally, they opened 1,012. Total, 1,539. But they closed some stores too, 115 here in, the, in North America, 86 internationally, a net of 201 closed for a total of growth, 1,339 units for a total of 19,592 in the section and the October 1st, 2023. Now, I will tell you, this is only company operated stores, okay? This doesn't include franchises, things like that. And I think they're trying to focus more on company run stores. But this is a lot right here. This is seven point, what is this number? 1339 out of 18,253, 182 times six. No, that's, so it's like seven to seven and a half percent growth on their company owned stores in last year. So not only are you getting pricing power to increase 6%, but you're also getting seven, seven and a half percent growth of stores. So as time goes on and these stores become more and more established, they're going to be adding a lot more bottom line to Starbucks profit. And that doesn't even stop in terms of the franchise owned stores. So let's go see what analysts are saying about Starbucks. Earnings per share going from 420 Look at this growth rate, 19%, 16%, 16%, 20%, 17%, to doubling to almost to over $8 per share. They're currently selling for 80, what was that, 85 or $86 a share, 89, whatever it is. They're selling for 11 times 2028 profit. That doesn't mean go out and buy it because of that. What it means is there's a lot of potential that analysts see, but you need to be good about doing it yourself. The revenue growth, guys, what did I tell you? 10%, 10%, 10%, 12%, 9%. Big time revenue growth, going from 40 billion this year all the way to 59 billion in 2028. So what is my price for good old Starbucks? Let's pull it up here in our stock analyzer tool. The last time I did it was March 14th. My assumptions, very simple. Six, eight, and 10% on revenue growth. Profit margin, 10, 11 and a half, and 13. I did the same for free cash flow. Here's my multiple. I applied 17 and a half, 20 and 22 and a half for PE and price of free cash flow. Again, if somebody told me a higher number, I'd say, yeah, maybe, I don't know. It's just, I'm trying to throw numbers out there to see, is it within my realm of possibility? And again, I did my desired return with no margin of safety of 9%. And remember guys, you've got to be ready. When you buy a company, in all likelihood, the stock will fall from the time you buy it. You've got to be able to separate the business from the stock price. Those are very important things that successful investors are able to do. But the most important part is the emotional part. You got to be able to buy the company when you're ready and then watch it go down and focus on the fundamentals. Because remember, you're going to buy based on fundamentals, but you're going to hold and make a ton of money based on the fundamentals coupled with managing your emotions. So hit the analyze button. The stock's currently at 86. Guys, look at this. $67 on the low side, 140 on the high side, and $100 in the middle. So, guys, is, is, is this enough margin of safety, 86 versus my 100, for me to buy Starbucks company, Starbucks coffee? Now, I will tell you this. I'm definitely going to sell puts this week on Starbucks, and let's look at the, the numbers on Starbucks puts. So, I'm going back here. I'm going to pull up Starbucks, and let's look at 32 days away. Again, $86 a share. Oh my gosh, look at this. Let's go to $85 a share. $2.15. That's almost, that's what? Two and a half percent for 30 days. That's an annualized return of 30%. I'm doing this for me. Now, again, don't buy anything just because somebody on the internet's doing it. I'm here to teach a process. The process you're going to pick is going to be bits and pieces of mine, bits and pieces of somebody else. I'm showing you my process. You should never mimic anybody just because they've bought something. What I want you to mimic, though, is the way in which I approach the emotional side of it. I assume that if I'm able to buy, if I'm fortunate enough to get the stock at 85 bucks, that it's going to go down further. The question is, will I be able to continue looking at the stock going down every single day? Because we've all seen that happen. We get anxious. Oh, my God, the stock's going down. Did I make a mistake? What emotions are running through you? You're sitting there and you're on your, you're on your own. You're sitting there at your house going, the stock keeps going down. My account value keeps going down. Is this going to zero? We always think that, but is it rational? I don't know. For some companies, yeah. Would I be surprised if Starbucks went to zero? Yeah, I'd be absolutely shocked. Does that mean it's not possible? No. Of course, anything can happen, but is it realistic? That's why I believe in diversifying based on a process. Every great investor has said, 
that they manage their emotions well and that's what makes them money. They don't jump in and out of stocks early on in their career. You want to sit there and make sure that you find a company and you buy it based on fundamentals. And as time goes on, the fundamentals hopefully will get better and hopefully the stock price will go lower because that stock price going lower is the market telling you, here's our emotion. The question is, can you have a different emotion from that? That's what's really important. And that's exactly why I created this community. I want to sit here and say, where can I be around like-minded people where I can sit there and talk about my fundamental analysis, but more importantly, talk about my emotions. What am I feeling about a company? I get people's input on the company, on the emotions. That's the key here. And that's why I created it for everybody else out there. Because I realize more and more that the emotional ability to stay in control is what's going to make me the most money long term. So this makes sense to you. And you're sick of making those emotional decisions that cost all of us money. Nobody in this world, including Warren Buffett, has made an emotional decision that did not cost them money. It always does. But the, the more you lessen that, the better you're going to do. So if you're interested, $7 for seven days. Click the link below. It's a dollar a day, guys. It'll really change the way in which you look at money. Company number three, the Googly Moogly. Now, guys, I love Google. Mo was smart enough to buy it at 135. I was not. It's at 156 currently. But again, a company, look at this. The company has hit an all-time high recently, but look how low it got here. All-time high was around 150, 151, 152. The low here, $86 a share. Just a year and a half later, $86 per share. Almost a fall of 50%. That's what I mean, guys. And remember what the stories were at this point? Google's lost its way. Google's bad. CEO needs to be fired. Fire that CEO. He's terrible. Do you hear that anymore? I don't hear it anymore. And there's some pretty interesting things on Google that I want you guys to see. So first off, the one thing I love about them, market cap, 1.95 trillion, enterprise value, 1.96. They practically have zero debt. It's incredible, guys. I love how tech companies are operating these days. The, the days of having to build a factory to make money don't exist anymore. You can now build off of ideas and code. And that provides a lot of value where you don't need debt to go take it over. And guess what? No debt. And they generated $70 billion in free cash flow in the last 12 months. That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. In the last five years, they've averaged $54 billion in free cash flow. Another incredible number. Guys, Google is the company you need to pay a premium for. They own search. Top two search engines in the world. One company that we're talking about right now, Google, and another one that you're actually watching on currently, YouTube. They own both of them. What did they pay? A billion six or a billion dollars for YouTube back in 2007, and now they generate tens of billions a year in revenue from it? That is incredible. And that's what I want everybody to realize, that the way search is going, we don't say Yahoo it. We say Google it. Hey, if you want to learn about a video, yes, there's TikTok out there, but YouTube owns the teaching market, the video market. And they do a great job, guys. We learn more and more about YouTube every day as part of this business. And we realize more and more their goal is making sure the user is satisfied. They reward us content creators to make sure you are satisfied. So here's how Google ad works. And this is what I love about them. Let's say you type in widgets. Okay. And you go to google.com. It's going to give you ABC widget. It's going to give you XYZ widget. And it's going to give you um, PG widget for me. Now, you're going to see like a little sponsored link or something like that. One, two, and three. Now, you might think, first off, 85% of all clicks happen in the first three links. But on top of that, you would think, what's the most expensive link? Person up top is paying the most. Not with Google. What they do is the number one link could be the lowest cost. Why? The more this website and landing page match to what you're doing, and the more people that click on it and a higher percentage, they're going to reward these guys by saying, hey... Thank you for putting a top quality website out there that was very relevant. We're going to charge you less than everybody else. That's what I love. Imagine that. You have a company out there that rewards the number one person by saying, you're so good for the user, so good for the consumer, we're not going to charge you as much. Now, what percentage of the revenue comes from search and ads? A huge chunk. But it's changing a little bit. Let me show you that right now. This is the revenue breakdown for Google back to 2007. Obviously, Google advertising is all in blue. Google Cloud Revenue is a dark blue, and Google Subscriptions Platform and Devices is gray. That's pretty much the set, same amount. It's pretty much the set. But look at this. Google Cloud is increasing its percentage and growing. Now, 
this percentage decline in Google advertising revenues, you're going to have some people out there saying, look, their ad revenue is declining. It is not. As a percentage of their total revenue, it's declining. But their total revenue is increasing and cloud is taking up a bigger chunk. I want more diverse revenues. If they get to the point where this is all third, 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 that'd be an incredible business. And cloud computing is supposed to be a high margin business. So I love that. So what's the right price to pay for Google? Let's go to Stock Analyzer and see. So this is Stock Analyzer from the last time I did it. 10 years of analysis, revenue assumptions, 5, 8, and 11, profit margin, 22, 24, and 26. Same with free cash flow. In a PE, I did 20, 23, and 26. And every time I talk about Google, I find myself getting so excited about it. I want to change that number, but I'm going to keep the same. And again, our 9% desired return, no margin of safety. I hit the analyze button. Guys, low price of 114, high price of 260, middle price of 173, 156 is the current price. I regret not buying it. So I think I'm going to look at puts here and see what I can do with puts here on this. Let's check this out. Pull up Google. I'm going to pull up 46, uh, 32 days from now, May, May 10th. And let's say 150 is my strike price. Guys, so I go to 150 here. Paying $3.20. Again, that's 2%. That's roughly 24% per year. For me, waiting a month to get it at $150 a share. Now, what's the risk? It goes much lower. I could have bought it cheaper. Stock number four, Alibaba. So, the famous Alibaba. Guys, the feel on Alibaba is it's negative sentiment all around because of China. China's ruining the world. They're going to invade Taiwan, yada, yada, yada. Very well could be true. I look, at, I look at Alibaba and think to myself, man, this is a company that's growing, still growing. This is their annual revenue, 120 billion versus 118 versus 99. It's still growing, albeit slower. And look at their profit. Their profit has dropped, but I go up here to operating income. This is one way to go find out how's the business fundamentals doing. Operating income takes all their profit before other income expenses, interest, et cetera. And look at this, guys. 6.7, 9.7, 7.9, 12.7, 12.4, 13, 14.25. So the fundamentals of the business are getting better. And that's what I like. I just think there's a lot of negativity around China. And the stock was at an all-time high, guys. Look at this. All-time high. Back on October 27, 2020 of 319. Greats like Charlie Munger and Guy Spear bought it at 250. Listen, I'm just glad I was... Didn't even pay attention. I didn't start buying at 250, but I absolutely would have. But now I'm in it. And again, I own the stock. Don't buy it just because I did. But I'm looking at stock analyzer tool. Let's pull up Alibaba. Last time I did it was March 14th. Guys, I did three, six, and 9% revenue growth. I did 15, 19, and 23 on the profit margin. A higher free cash flow because their free cash flow is high over the last 10 years. 17, 22, and 27. I applied a multiple of 16, 18, and 20 for both earnings and free cash flow. And again, 9% desired return. But this one especially needs, uh, I think there are more geopolitical risks that can drive the stock price down. So get yourself a little bit more margin of safety. If I hit the analyze button, guys, it's all green. A low price of 120 to 130, a high price of 336 to 400, middle price of 200 to 240. So for Alibaba guys, again, don't buy it just because I do. There's a lot of risks involved geopolitically. Go make sure you're, you're aware and comfortable with those risks. Last stock, Southwest Airlines. I love talking about Southwest. Southwest has all Boeing 737s. Just this weekend, a cover on an engine fell off, and now they're crying about that. I get it. I do understand that. But I think Southwest is interesting, and here's why. The stock is at $28.66. Go before COVID. They did... The year before COVID, they did $22.4 billion in revenue. Their, cost of, their, their gross margin, which is after cost of goods sold, was $6 billion, which is a little under 30%. So what is that, 27 28%? Let's go look at this last year. $26 billion in revenue, $4.22 billion. Not bad, right? It's only 15%. So it's down a lot. Okay. 15 versus 27 or 20, 30%. A lot different. Okay, now look at net income. Before COVID, $2.3 billion on $22 billion. That's 10%. This year, 4.65, 2%. So guys, I think it's a temporary thing. Remember, they had the computer issues last year. There's a lot of issues they're working through. 
I think this is a temporary fall in the, in, in the profit. I don't think it's permanent. That is my thesis here. I like Southwest Airlines. I think they're the best run airline out there. They do a great job of hedging their fuel costs well, and they stick to one airplane and, and routes that they can make money on. They're all about efficiency, and I love that. So what is the right price to pay for Southwest Airlines stock? 10-year analysis, 2 4 and 6%. Now for the profit margin, I did 7 10 and 13 and same with free cash flow. I'm still assuming that they could still be better, but not as good as the past. I did 15, 18, and 21 for the PE. And again, 9% return, no margin of safety. Guys, don't forget, go click the link below if you really want to manage your emotions because all five of these companies are companies that are down a lot and you need to be able to understand that very well if you own them and either buy more or write it out. That's so important. So click the link below, $7 for seven days. Hit the analyze button. Look at this, low price of 40, high price of 125, middle price of 75. So guys, I, again, I'm gonna sell puts on this thing. I appreciate your time. And if you wanna see the 30 stocks that I can't wait to own, click our next link, watch our next video.